It's here, we got our hands on the Hisense UHG. Hi, I'm Daigo, a tester at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. Today we're reviewing the Hisense UHG to show you how it performs for various uses. We'll start with the movie and HDR movie category. Then we'll move on to the TV show and sports. We'll also talk about gaming and HDR gaming and finish with PC use. Throughout the video, we'll be comparing it to its predecessor, the Hisense H9G. That's right, it's not a replacement of the HAG like many believe but rather a replacement of the H9G because Hisense shifted their entire lineup. Also, we received your questions pertaining to our hashtag Ask Ratings. We handpicked some of them, and we'll be addressing them later in this video, so do stick around for that. We bought the 55-inch Hisense UHG to test, but it's also available in the 65-inch size. We expect a larger size to have very similar picture quality. In Canada, this TV is known as the U88G, we don't know of any equivalent models outside of North America because Hisense has a different product line depending on the region. There's a model with the same name in Australia, but that's a completely different TV. First, let's look at the overall design, the inputs, and the smart features. From the front, it almost looks identical to the H9G. It still has thin bezels and a solid center mount stand. The back has a checkerboard-like pattern with all the inputs facing the left side. There are tracks and clips to help with cable management. Except for the metal borders, it's mostly made of plastic, but the overall build quality is good and there's very little wobble. There's a bit of a flex around the VESA mount, but this shouldn't cause any issues. For inputs, there are four HDMIs, two USBs, a digital optical audio out, a 3.5 millimeter analog audio out, a composite input that requires the included adapter, a coaxial, and an ethernet port. HDMI 3 and 4 are the HDMI 2.1 ports, but the HDMI 3 is also the ER port, which means you can only plug in one HDMI 2.1 device if you want to plug in your soundbar through eARC, unless your soundbar supports 4K at 120Hz pass-through. If you don't know what eARC is, it basically lets your TV pass high-quality audio to an external sound system over an HDMI connection. It's like ARC, just better. In terms of smart features, it's still running Android TV. Hisense said they're sticking with Android TV for now, so it's not going to get updated to Google TV. But it did get an update to Android 10. It's still fairly easy to navigate around the interface, and it actually runs smoother than on the H9G. The remote got a slight redesign and has more quick access buttons to streaming services. There's a microphone for voice control through Google Assistant, which you can use to launch apps, ask for info, or change simple things like the volume and the input source, but you can change more complicated settings like brightness or contrast. Before we start talking about the performance, it's important to know that some of the things that we consider important for specific use are based on assumptions. So some of them may not apply to you if your viewing conditions are different. For example, we assume most people watch movies in a dark room, but there are plenty of people out there who watch movies in a bright room. We'll point these things out as we go along, because the viewing conditions or the amount of ambient light affects the viewing experience a lot. All right, let's get to the test results now. And we're going to start with the movie and HDR movie category. One of the most important aspects for movie watching is the contrast, the difference between a pure black and a pure white at a given brightness level, without local dimming. It has a huge impact on picture quality and it's essential for viewing in the dark room because a TV with a high contrast ratio can produce deeper blacks. It's not as important if you watch it in a bright room but it does help produce a better detail in dark scenes. In this regard, the UHG is excellent because it's using a VA panel. It's not quite as good as the H9G, but excellent nonetheless. It gets even better with local dimming, so you'll get very deep blacks when watching in a dark room. Speaking of local dimming, it's great. One of the best we measured outside of an OLED. On the high setting, there's almost no black crush and small objects like stars are still visible. There are some blooming, but the algorithm does a good job at averaging the black level so it's not as noticeable. It's visible around subtitles, but only if the background is black. Likewise, zone transitions are visible with their test patterns, but not in real content. One of the things to note here is that the 55 inch has 132 dimming zones, while the 65 inch has 360 zones, so we expect the larger one to perform a bit better. As for uniformity, the black screen is not entirely black when local dimming is disabled, and there's also some clouding. With local dimming on, the black level is better, but you get some blooming around the test cross. Black uniformity is something that varies between individual units though, so yours might be different. 
If you watch a lot of movies in HDR, then you'll be happy to hear that there's a huge improvement over the H9G when it comes to the color gamut. It has almost full DCI-P3 coverage, the color gamut used in most HDR content, and the Rec 2020 coverage is also very good. On top of that, it's well calibrated out of the box, although color accuracies might vary between units. As far as our unit is concerned, it doesn't really need calibration because most inaccuracies aren't visible to the naked eye. Gradient handling is good, which is how well the TV displays color gradation. It's not quite as good as the H9G, and you can see some banding in the grays, greens, and reds. Unfortunately, the noise reduction features don't do much to smooth out banding. Okay, let's talk about HDR brightness, because that's one of the most important things for a good HDR experience. It's a bit brighter than the H9G in real scenes, close to 800 nits. And the automatic brightness limiter is not as aggressive, so there's less brightness variation between different scenes. As you can see in this EOTF, which is essentially the gamma in HDR, it's actually overshooting the brightness target most of the time. This means that most scenes are brighter than they should be, and that can make some scenes appear washed out. Basically, what you need to know is that it's more than bright enough to deliver a fantastic HDR experience, but it's not the most accurate. The last thing we need to touch on in the movie and HDR movie category has to do with motion, and that's the stutter and the judder. Movies are usually in 24p, so you get a stutter on a TV with fast response times like the UHG because the frames are held longer. If it really bothers you, you can use motion interpolation or the black frame insertion feature to smooth out the stutter, but some people might not like that soap opera effect. Also, motion interpolation causes some artifacts when there's a lot of movement. We'll talk more about the black frame insertion in the sports section. As for judder, the UHG can remove judder from all sources, so that's one thing less to worry about. So, what is it like to watch movies and HDR movies on the UAG? In short, it's excellent. Blacks are deep and it gets super bright. The only thing is that you might see some banding in some scenes. Now, let's move on to the TV show and sports categories. First up is the response time. This is essentially the time it takes for one pixel to change from one color to another. And this affects fast moving content. Having a display with a good response time usually means you get better motion handling with less ghosting or blurred trails behind moving objects. The UAG's response time is not quite as good as the H9G's, but it's still excellent. It's a bit slow when transitioning from a dark to a bright color. So you can sometimes see a dark gray trail behind moving objects, which we commonly call black smear. This is common for VA panels. However, there is an issue that might bother people more. Some users have reported seeing red ghosting, and we can say that it's present on our unit too. We don't know if Hisense is going to fix this. We'll keep you posted in a written review. There's a black frame insertion feature that can help reduce a persistence blur by strobing the backlight, but it can only flicker at 120Hz, which means it might cause motion duplication in 60Hz content, and some people might be sensitive to the flickering. Depending on your lighting condition, the screen's brightness in SDR mode and reflection handling might be important, but the good news is that you don't have to worry about either. It handles reflection amazingly well, and it gets plenty bright to fight glare. As for the viewing angles, they're pretty narrow. This means that the image quality degrades when you're watching the TV at an angle, so you do need to keep that in mind if this applies to your setup and use, because this doesn't just affect the TV shows and sports, it applies to all uses. So, to sum it up, the UAG is great for watching TV shows and sports. It doesn't have the best viewing angle though, so if you have a setup that forces you to watch from the sides, it might not be for you. Okay, let's move on to the gaming and HDR gaming categories. We've already talked about the response time and the red ghosting, but there's another issue that users have reported, and that has to do with VRR. Variable refresh rate is a feature that helps reduce screen tearing when gaming. Some users have said that they saw a lot of motion artifact when VRR is on, and that the local dimming is not available. Again, we don't know if Hisense will address this, we'll keep you posted. As for the type of VRR it supports, there's HDMI forum, VRR, FreeSync, and G-Sync compatibility. Input lag is outstanding when playing at 120Hz, and even though it's a bit higher than most monitors at 60Hz, it's still low enough that most people shouldn't feel any lag. Console compatibility is fantastic, everything works as expected, and there's just no VRR on the PS5 right now. We'll have to wait until Sony implements it through a firmware update. The local dimming performs exactly as it does outside of game mode, but as mentioned just now, it doesn't work with VRR enabled. You can get around that issue for now by switching it out of game mode or by lowering the resolution. We'll keep you updated in the written review when there's a fix. There's also no change in HDR brightness in game mode. It gets very bright, and just like when it's out of game mode, it's overshooting the brightness target, so almost all scenes appear brighter than they should. Overall, the UAG is excellent for gaming and HDR gaming. There are a couple of kinks to work out, 
but at least it's a huge improvement over the H9G, which was limited to 60 Hz at 4K and had no VRR support whatsoever. All right, the last category is PC monitor. We just talked about the input lag, and that doesn't change here. You still get a very responsive experience when using the TV as a PC monitor. Supported resolutions is another area where there's a big improvement over the H9G. It supports all common resolutions at 60 Hz and 120 Hz, but you have to force a custom resolution for 1440p. It also supports Chroma 444 at all supported resolutions, which can help you with text clarity. You can read more about that here. On the subject of text clarity, this TV is using BGR subpixel layout instead of the usual RGB. This layout has no effect on the picture quality, but it might cause some blurry text in some applications. You can read more about that here. And the last thing we're going to touch on in the PC monitor category is image flicker. The backlight is not flicker free. It does use PWM, but the flicker frequency is so high that most people shouldn't notice it. This is great if you're sensitive to backlight flicker. So overall, the UAG is great to use as a PC monitor. You have to sit a good distance from the TV though, because the narrow viewing angles cause the image to look washed out from the sides if you sit too close. Before we get to our verdict, let's talk about the sound quality of the built-in speakers. They're pretty decent, but like most TV speakers, they have almost no low bass. There's a big bump in the high bass that makes them sound a bit boomy, and the treble is a bit soft. They do get very loud, and luckily, there's not much compression or distortion at max volume. Okay, so for our mixed usage score, we gave the UAG an 8.4. Let's break it down. The UAG is excellent for watching movies and HDR movies. It has a high contrast ratio, great local dimming, an excellent color gamut, and it gets super bright. For TV shows and sports, it's great. We pointed out that it has a narrow viewing angle, but if your setup doesn't require a wide viewing angle, then you can just disregard that. Visibility in well-lit rooms is not a problem either. It handles reflection well, and it gets more than bright enough to combat glare. For gaming and HDR gaming, it's excellent but you need to wait a bit for all the kinks to get ironed out, especially when it comes to VRR. And lastly, for use as a PC monitor, it's also great, but some people might be turned off by the BGR subpixel layout. If we compare it to other TVs from other manufacturers, it competes directly with the Sony X90J and the Samsung QN90A QLED. Against the Sony, the UAG scores better because it has a much better color gamut and it supports VRR out of the box. Another downside of the Sony is that it can do 4K at 120Hz in Dolby Vision. It doesn't score as well as the Samsung, mainly because the QN90A gets a lot brighter and it has a much wider viewing angle. That said, the Samsung QN90A QLED is also significantly more expensive than the UAG. Let's take a look at some of your questions now. Sadimo92 asked, HDMI 2.1? The answer is yes. It has two HDMI 2.1 inputs, port 3 and 4. Question 2 comes from Headphone Man 123 and he's asking, how does it not support DTS-X if the TV itself supports IMAX Enhanced, which uses DTX Audio and has eARC? Good question. The answer is that IMAX Enhanced is a variant of DTS-X, but not exactly the same. So a TV can support one without supporting the other. We were somewhat surprised by the test results too. This could be a bug that Hisense might address at some point, but we don't know that for sure. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.